Islam. Morals are men, upright, independent, and fearless, who care for their loved ones and follow the prophet to a destiny which is not uncertain, no unknown. They are fortified by the impregnable doctrine built upon love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. It is therefore folly at its greatest heights for smelly culprits with their studious plans to invade such realms. They try and try, but their own bad plan to bring down wrath upon their head like the sword of old Dominicus had. Intrigue and studious come and find a difficult path to travel within the ranks of the Moor. This is so because the Moorish movement has been well planned by Prophet Noble Drew Ali, whose latent powers are abundant, unknown, and may be called into action as a matter of defense at any moment. The Prophet Noble Drew Ali knows the members who are interested. They are the vanguards of the movement. And as the whole Moors' halls increase in America, all of the Moors are active and not passive. A member's interest can only be in one direction. And having traveled over the road years ago, the prophet knows where every member is along the road. A few feet below is another road where schemers walk, where traders grin, and caught pricks bask in the sun. They think that they're on the same road with the true Moors. But the Moors are high above on a pinnacle where they might view the destruction as they fall for the last time. And the sun bleach and the sun dry midday sun. Hungry scavengers flying high, catch scent, divide, leaving, crying out. Caviar emptop, cast out the dead caucus. The Moors high above see further and further the worst that exists. All themselves down while the hawks wait. At this time, I would like to recite the Moorish American prayer, the source from which we draw our strength. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali, amen. First off, I'd like to rise. Walking in Jerusalem, just like John. Giving praise to Allah, the author, the creator, the governor of the world, almighty, eternal, and incomprehensible. The one who stretched forth the heaven with his hands, who have described with his fingers the courses of the stars. Who said it bounds to the ocean that it cannot pass and said to the stormy winds, be still. I'd like to give on to the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. Talking about none other than our holy and the luscious prophet, Noble Drew Ali. I'd like to give honor to prophet Noble Drew Ali because it was he who reached down into the watery grave of hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, theft, and everything that harmed to set you and me back upright on our feet again. I'd like to give honor to the forerunner to the prophet Noble Drew Ali, Marcus Mosagafi. I like to give honor to Marcus Garvey because this brother had to have pure thoughts in order to pave the way for love. I like to give honor to our two flags, just solely and just so quinted, the right of soil and the right of blood, and honor to our charter that gives us the right to function in these United States and throughout the world without molestation or ridicule of any kind. I like to give honor to all literature pertaining to Islam in the Moorish Science Temple of America. I'd like to give on to the leadership in the Moorish Science Temple of America. I'd like to give on to effort because so many of us don't even try. I'd like to give on to Temple 2 here in Portland, Oregon. And also I'd like to give honor to Sister Calhoun Bay, who's in Seattle, Washington from Detroit, who is talking to the Moors down here in uh, Portland, Oregon, about our wills and our ways. And I'd like to give honor to the Vosh right here, this uh, media, for giving us the opportunity to come on this show to talk about the last prophet in these days and time. At this time, I'd like to read from the book of the seven seals. The nun was able to open and read from his sacred pages the messages of purity and love. And the chapter I want to read from this week, this evening, is chapter 6. And it's important that I read from chapter 6 in chapter 6 because when you look over at chapter 5, it talks about 
uh, after the feast, the homeward journey, the missing Jesus, the search for him, his parents find him in the temple. He goes with them to Nazareth, symbolic meaning of the carpenter too. So what I read today is going to be symbolic because we're going to be talking about the temple of perfected man, a temple that could never be destroyed. And when we talk about this temple and when we talk about these tools, we're talking about symbolic tools. Because this is the temple of God. Man is the temple of God. And we do have tools, but the tools are symbolic. So I want to read from a verse. And the verse I want to read from is in chapter 6, verse 11. And it reads on this wise. And when he first saw Jesus, he was climbing up a 12-step ladder. And he carried in his hands a compass a square, and an axe. So they're talking about Jesus. And they say when they first saw Jesus, he was climbing up a ladder. And he had three things in his hand, the compass, the square, and the axe. And Jew Ali tells us about the compass and what the compass do. He tells us about the square and what the square do. He tells us about the axe and what the axe do. And as we say so often here at Temple 2, when Jesus was seen, and we first saw Jesus, he had these three things in his hand. But when you meet a Moorish American monster, a Moorish American monster had these same three things in his hand that Jesus had, which is the compass, the square, and the axe, because through Jew Ali, we are able to overcome some things. We overcome this compass. And he said we use the compass to draw a circle around our passions and desires to keep them in the bounds of righteousness. We use the square to measure all our lines, to straighten out the crooked places of the way, to make the corners of our conduct square. And we use the axe to cut away the knotty, unuseless, and ungainly parts to make the character symmetrical. So I wanted to read this chapter today to our Portland listening audience because the lesson of today is know thyself. This is why the subject matter is wisdom. And wisdom is the application of knowledge. You can have knowledge, but once you begin to apply this knowledge, then it becomes wisdom. Praise Allah and the honor to the prophet, Nova Jew Ali. You know, uh, when a lot of people go to church on Sunday, and back in the day when I was coming up, most people or the ministers was called to the ministry. Now they go to college to become ministers. And when you go to church on Sunday, basically what you're looking for is a... Uh, a speaker, a speaker that would uh, give you certain type of encouragement instead of the word of God. So today I want to talk about this seven. It's important that I talk about this seven that's on the front of our uh, Moorish Holy Quran because Jew Ali teaches us that seven is the number of perfection. You know, when you look in Genesis, it's talking about the seven golden candlesticks. It's talk about the seven. It talks about the seven golden candlesticks, the seven layers of skin. It talks about a lot in this seven. And when you look at the front of our Moorish Quran, we have a seven, the same seven that you see right here. But when you see the seven, you see four breaks. And these four breaks represent Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. The four breaks also represent fire, water, earth, and air. It also represents the political, religious, socially, and economically. But on the front, we see that these four breaks are square. But when you turn them over to the back, you see that they are rounded off. And they are rounded off through the tools of the workshop of the mind where things are made of thought and where we build up character. So we're going to round our character off. And when you look at the back and see this sword of old Dominicus, this sword of old Dominicus at the hair, he had the sword there telling you, telling me that right here where Jew Ali said, but be wise, O rulers, and learn, O thou that art to command the nations, one crime authorized by thee is worse than the escape of ten from punishment. So now we have a seven. We have a seven, and it says seven is the number of perfection. When you talk about Jesus, when you talk about Muhammad, when you talk about Buddha, 
When you talk about confusion, we are talking about the same reincarnated spirit. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius is of the same spirit. The books say whenever nature is in need for a prophet, Allah will send one. So he sent Jesus. He sent Muhammad. He sent Buddha. He sent Confucius. And this era of time, he sent Nova Jew Ali. So when you look at this seven, and think about Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius. We're talking about a brotherhood of prophets. We're talking about a prophethood. So you have a brotherhood of man, and you have a prophethood. Boss Neal and Lynch Bay, I don't care how much work we do. I don't care what we do. We still have to follow the prophet to a destiny, which is not uncertain. No unknown at all. I ain't got to worry about Boss Neal comes down. Prophet number two. I'm prophet number three. Mm -hmm. I'm back now. You don't have to worry about that because the way that he was raised. So I've been getting a lot of information that a lot of people saying that more's here, more's there, and more's everywhere to stay in the line with the prophet. We can't call ourselves that because you know what Jew Ali said? He said, don't even name your children Ali. And the reason why he said don't name your children Ali because you see what's going on today. People start calling themselves the prophet because they start calling themselves Ali. So I wanted to share that today because we have this four breaks and seven is the number of perfection. And uh, Jew Ali, the book say, whenever nations in need for a prophet, Allah will send one. And he said that if Allah will send one, he have to send one to a people that need him the most. And we needed Jew Ali the most. We needed Jew Ali the most because we were Negroes colored and black. Whenever Allah sent a prophet, Nova Jew Ali is the only prophet that had to come with two things. He had to bring us nationality and divine creed. Every other prophet just came to bring a religion. So we understand that Nova Jew Ali had to come with a methodology that was conducive to our growth and development, a methodology that nobody else had to do. So Nova Jew Ali. Nova Jew Ali came and he cleared something up. Because every time you hear a brother or a sister, even those who spoke to him more, they always talk about the 14th and the 15th Amendment. And they say the 14th and the 15th Amendment is what freed us. But Noble Jew Ali said, through your free national name, you are known and recognized by all nations of the earth that are recognized by said national government in which we live. The 14th and 15th Amendment, both the North and South in unit, placing the southerner, which was at that time without power with the constitutional body of power. And at that time, 1865, the free national constitutional law that was in force since 1774 declared all men free and equal. And if all men are, uh, are free and equal by this constitution, since the constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and the 15th Amendment for the salvation of our people and its citizens. So now, you got Jefferson Davis and you have Robert E. Lee. They fought with the South. And then you had the North. So what the 14th and 15th Amendment did was brought Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee, who fought with the South, back into the constitutional foe. Ju Ali says since the Constitution has never been changed, there is no need for the application of the 14th and 15th Amendment for the salvation of our people and its citizens. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to hurry up and call Brother Boston Hill because his birthday was last week and he got a lot to tell us. But I want to leave you with this before I called him. The prophet gave us a lesson. He said, was Satan to be bound then? It says Satan was to be bound in part. So you can't kill Satan. You probably could destroy him and cut his head off, but he could pop back up because when you talk about Satan, you're talking about a spirit. You're not talking about nobody individually. You're talking about a spirit. So now we have something too. We have Elohim. It says, who made the devil? And it says, Elohim. It says, who is Elohim? It says, Elohim is the seven created spirits that created everything that ever was, is, and ever more to be. So now how do you create the devil? You create the devil in thought. If there's a devil that exists in you, you made him. So if either who made the devil, what either him will have to do is unmake the devil. And how do we unmake the devil? By living according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. I got to tell you this one more time. Sister Sabri is 
Bay out of uh, Baltimore, out of uh, Brother Pray for Hill's temple. She asked a question. She said, how in the world can sisters walk around wearing affairs when you know that that's the national headdress for men? Well, sister, I need to share this with you. My instructor, when he joined the temple, the prophet, Noble Drew Ali of 1913, told him to get away from that Masonic stuff. But the reason why these sisters is wearing these fairs today, because most of the brothers, when you're on Friday and on Sunday, you wear a fair that brings 360 degrees, but during the weekday, you sneak over to one of the Masonic orders. And this is why the woman is beginning to wear feathers because they wear them in the Eastern style. Just like your passwords and everything else is in the Eastern style. So when you see a sister that wear a fez, it's because her man that lost his head. So what we want to do right mm -hmm. now, we want to call a brother. Got something to tell you. He got something to share with you. And he have not been here for a while. So sit back and we got this last supper. And I want you to listen to the chairman of Temple 2 here in Portland, Oregon, Brother Boston Eel. Praise the Lord, Sheik. Praise the Lord. First of all, just want to start off and reiterate praise and honors that the Sheik gave when he opened up the show. As he mentioned, I hadn't been here in a while, and uh, last Sunday was my birthday, uh, so I had some friends that wanted to take me out and uh, take me out to dinner. So it was a very enjoyable experience. It was a very blessed day. I'm thankful to Allah that uh, he blessed me to be uh, another year older. Uh, I'm glad to be back here on the Moore's Voice uh, TV show. And also I want to extend high honors to uh, one of the true and faithful here in the Moore Science Temple of America, Temple 2 here in Portland, Oregon, Brother Navi Alahi Bay, my brother man, who is our treasure, who is uh, recuperating and he's healing good. He's moving around a little bit more. So um, we look forward to having him back in our midst uh, here pretty soon. Uh, I had a couple of things that I wanted to talk about today because I've been re uh, getting a lot of questions from different individuals, especially I've been getting a lot of inquiries from different uh, 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 females from all different parts of the world you know, asking about this more movement, because we have people out there, we have brothers and sisters out there who are hungry for the truth. However, things are being distorted and uh, some some wrong information, some mis misinformation is, 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 is being put out there. And uh, it is, it, you know, what I want to say is that it, it needs to cease and desist because we have brothers and sisters out there that's hungry that wants to come into the Moore Science Temple of America, but they're not sure about wanting to join the Moore Science Temple of America because all I hear is, hear is about paperwork. But anyway, I'm going to do what's customary in the Moore Science Temple of America, and I'm going to take my reading from the Circle 7 of the Moore's Holy Quran, and, uh, and then, uh, uh, then, then I'll go into my presentation for, for tonight. Like she said, I have a lot that I wanted to share with our point and listen to audience why I, why I have the time, so I intend to do that. So anyway, these are the divine instructions from the Holy Prophet. And you know, and the Prophet Nova Drali said in the Moors literature, he tells the, the sheiks and the leaders, the grand sheiks and sheikesses and the leaders of the Moors Science Temple of America to study chapter 29. And uh, this chapter is entitled Magistrate and Subject. And uh, I'm going to read, um, I'm just going to read a, a few verses, and then I'll go into my presentation. And it says, verse 1 says, O thou, the favorite of heaven, whom the sons of men, thy equals, have agreed to raise to sovereign power and sat as a ruler over themselves. Consider the ends and importance of their trust far more than the dignity and height of thy station." Thou art clothed in purple and seated on a throne. The crown of majesty invested, invested thy temples. The scepter of power is placed in thy hand, but not for thyself were these ensigns given, not meant for thy own good, but the good of thy kingdom. The glory of a king is the welfare of his people. His power and dominion rest on the heart, 
parts of his subjects. And I'm going to stop right there because the next thing that I wanted to talk about, now I got, uh, I'm going to stand honest, first of all, to uh, my, my brothers and friends back on the East Coast in Virginia. Brother uh, Kerry Alinde Eel and, and his twin brother, uh, Brother K. Alinde Eel. Then I want to also extend honors to my identical twin brother, Brother T. Boston Neal, who is located in Wichita, Kansas at this time. But uh, we have a book. I have a book that I purchased from Brother Kerry Alinde Eel, and it's called More Science Tips of America Frequently Asked Questions. And there was a couple of questions that I'm going to go over in here. And now I'm going to share with our point and listening audience and more is here than everywhere who uh, who are going to be listening to this broadcast. Um, now, one of the questions that I had was about our flag, because um, there's been some confusion about our flag. Now, I'm going to back this up with the Quran questionnaire, because this is the prophet's literature. And I'm going to bring it straight from the prophet's literature when we talk about this uh, particular subject matter. Now, question seven in here says, this is one of the frequently asked questions in this book. It's on page 169. And question seven says, why does the Moore Science Temple of America have its own flag? The Prophet Noble Jali, and this is the response that was given, uh, given to that question. And it says, Prophet Noble Jali declared us a living Moorish nation, October 17th, 1928, while wrapping the Moorish flag around Sister Grace Barry Eel and the American flag around Brother M. Morris Eel. Kissed them both on the forehead while holding up the square and declared us a nation of free and independent people, a nation within a nation. He also stated that the flag was of her and the land was of him. The Moorish Americans have two flags that we fly along alongside one another because the Moorish flag uh, for one is the flag of our descent and the American flag is the flag of our birth. We are Moorish Americans because we are descendants of Moroccans and born in America. So in regards to the flag, I have seen some because I had an a, a individual ask me which one is which one is the Moorish flag? Is it this white flag that's got this all, all this uh, 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 the, the designs on it, everything like that, or is it the red flag? Now, I'm going to go to the Quran questionnaire and read question number uh, 20, no, question number 19. And question number 19 says this. Here's the question. It says, what kind of a flag is the Moors? And the answer is, it is a red flag with the five-pointed green star at the center. So if you see any other flag besides this red flag with a five-pointed green star in the center, and somebody tell you that that's the Moorish flag, that's not the Moorish flag that the Prophet Noble Dry Lee went and retrieved in 1913 when Woodrow Wilson was in office. This is not the, uh, the, the any other flag outside of the red flag with the five-pointed green star in the center was not the flag that was, that was locked in the vault in the basement of the White House. The, the flag that Noble Dry Lee went to... Uh, uh, retrieved from President Woodrow Wilson at that time, at that era of time, was a red flag with a five-pointed green star in the center. And then we know, because our questionnaire tells us so, it says, what do the five points represent? The five points represent love, true peace, freedom, and justice. Uh, question 21, it says, how old is our flag? It is over 10,000 years old. Now, I'm going to stop there because... I'm just going to br uh, briefly just talk about the flag a little bit because w w all these different type of flags. Uh, there was a question that was posed in the Moorish Science Temple of America to uh, the Sheik and, and, and myself at one time where, um, where we were talking about uh, 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 Marcus Garvey's flag. And it was a, th there was seemed to be a misconception about Marcus Garvey's flag. Now, we all know, some of us in the Moorish Science Temple know that uh, Marcus Mosea Garvey was born in St. Anne's, Jamaica. So uh, his descent flag uh, had to be a Jamaican flag. The red, green, and black flag was the flag of his organization, the UNIA. Uh, that was 
the color of that flag, but it wasn't his national dis descent flag, such as like uh, what the Jamaican flag is. Okay, there's another question that was asked me by another individual, and I believe this sister came out of Canada. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, hopefully I'll be able to answer her question as well. So here's the next question from the book that uh, the brother man wrote. And uh, question 21 in the book says, what is the Moorish Americans' opinion of the driver's license? Did the Prophet Noble Ali promote driving without a license? Now, we're going to talk about this because I've been hearing a lot of young brothers, a lot of sisters been asking me, uh, is it required for us to drive, have a driver's license, be in possession of a driver's license when operating a motor vehicle? Okay, but I'm going to read the answer to this question. And hopefully that will give... Uh, our listening audience a little bit more understanding about uh, 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 about Prophet Noble Jali and his divine work. And the answer is, the Prophet Noble Jali informed the Moors that they must obey the laws of the government to be law abiders until it violates your religion. The driver's license was not a uh, was not a requirement for citizens at that time. In the 1920s, most states didn't require a valid driver's license as they do now. The standing law during the 1920s required all persons in the transportation business, livery service, or drivers for hire to possess a valid driver's order. It wasn't until the 1930s was the license required for all citizens. As it stands, it is required for us today as it is the law of the land and in no way does it interfere with our divine rights. Below is the driver's order for Brother A. Brown Bay, one of the prophet's chauffeurs. And it, it shows a picture in this book of that driving order from that time and that era. Uh, so, yes, we need to be in possession of a driver's license when operating a motor vehicle. Because like the prophet uh, uh, says in his teachings, that all Moorish Americans must obey the laws of the government. And by being a Moorish American, we are part and partial of the government and must live the life accordingly. So if we ain't doing that, if we ain't, if we doing things that's diametrically opposed to what the Prophet Noble Drew Ali has set down in our divine constitution and bylaws, our additional laws, and any of the literature that he has brought for the salvation of his people, then you can expect that Allah will uh, deal with you at, 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 at that time. Because in uh, the Holy Quran of the Moor Science Temple of America, the lesson religion, you know, it says, Oh, think not bold men that thy punishment is delayed or the arm of Allah is weakened because thy punishment is delayed. See, Allah sees everything. He knows everything. He hears everything. And this is what I've learned in the Moor Science Temple of America. You can't play with Allah. The Prophet Noble Jali said, you can't tear this Moor Science Temple up. It'll tear you up. So what our brothers and sisters out there need to do is that they need to get in line with the noble Prophet Drew Ali's uh, laws and his teachings and, and, and live the life accordingly. Now, another thing that I wanted to talk about today, too, was... Um, uh, somebody had asked me another question, and uh, it was about the name Il, the, about the tribal attributes of Il and Bay. Now, uh, I had a uh, a couple of brothers that I had been in a communication with, who uh, you had never proclaimed their nationality, and uh, one brother called me from uh, called me from the Midwest. I believe it was, if I can remember correctly, I believe it was. Uh, Michigan, it, it was up in one of those states. But the brother called me, and I asked the brother, I said, well, uh, brother, how you, when did you proclaim your nationality? And he was like, I didn't proclaim my nationality. I said, well, how do you get an ill or bay put on your name? How you just, uh, I don't think you just can add an ill or bay to your name because it's the, the responsibility of the grand sheik of that temple that you join to give you your ill or bay. So there's a lot of misconceptions and uh, misinformation going on out there, and it needs to stop because uh, uh, Morris is out here that's, that's, that's doing that. They're like the Sheik was reading, uh, quoting earlier, uh, caveat emptor, you know, uh, cast the dead carcass out, you know. So that this is what we're looking at. We're looking at all this, uh, all this stuff going on around the Morris Scientific Temple of America. 
You know, and the other thing that I'm really, really disappointed in is that you have brothers that be over here in this grand body, and then they, uh, oh, I don't like this grand body. I'm going to go over here in this other grand body, you know, and, it, it, you know, that needs to stop, too. That needs to stop, too. If, if you want to help the more scientific of America, stay put where you're at. Stay put at the grand body where you at. I'm in the same grand body uh, 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 for my whole 33 years that I've been in this more scientific of America. You know, I'm following the prophet. You know, when somebody asks me, what grand body are you from? I tell them, I say, I'm not part of any grand body. You know, my body is grand. You know, that's what Prophet Noble Jali teaches me to make this body grand. You know what I'm saying? So there's only one temple, one more science temple of America, one prophet, and one nation. So, um, uh, it's because, of the, I mean, the condition of our brothers and sisters, our Asiatic brothers and sisters right now, the condition that, 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 that our community is plagued with is because of the misinformation that these Moors is putting out there, you know. So let's, let's get this thing back right. Let's, let's, let's work on putting this thing together, back together, up under one head, just like the prophet left it, and one more science, Temple of America, and not all these different ones. And then another thing, too. Because a lot of these temples in, in some of these states are not even registered with the Secretary of State. Because if, in order to be a functioning temple, more science temple, in any state where you at, you know, your temple must be registered with the Secretary of State. Because this is a religious uh, corporation. But uh, anyway, I got something else that I want to talk about tonight. And this is very important. This is very important. And I want to talk about the back of our Quran questionnaire, the back of our one-on-one, -on -one, which is our authority. Now, everybody that calls himself a Moorish American is using this, this 1099 right here. But I got some information on the Hurd's revised statute, and I'm going to share that with our Portland listener audience tonight so that y'all know how the Prophet Noble Jali set this uh, 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 corporate structure up for the Moorish scientific of America. And I'm going to read this as follows. It said, the acts of incorporation as well as the history surrounding each act, the Religious Corporation Act, this section lets us know that they are revised herds, statutes, and Religious Corporation Act. Many attempt to say that the prophet set up the temple in a way that placed the temple outside the jurisdiction of the state of Illinois because the grand body files reports to the Secretary of State even after the incorporation MST of A. July 20th, 1928, there is evidence of this file uh, dated February of 1929, annual report of the Moore Science Temple of America Incorporated to the Secretary of the State of Illinois. This is required as we are a part of the United States via the Illinois Constitution. The portion of the MSTA under the leadership of then leader C. Kirkman Bay, now under the leadership of R. Jones Bay, is no different than the MST of A that the prophet set up. Thus, we would not be able to use the literature or any other artifacts of the temple. Uh, Section 35, thus, gave, thus this gave Noble Drew Ali, Millie Hill, Small Bay, Lover Bay and Foreman Bay, the power to form the religious corporation, May 2nd, 1928, in a special meeting of the members of the Moore Science Temple of Science, and officially adopted the Moore Science Temple of America in accordance with Section 35. July 20th, 1928, the status was changed from civic to relig relig religious organization upon filing the affidavit. As hereinafter provided, it shall be and remain a body politic and corporate by the name so adopted. Section 36 says the prophet was the chairman of the meeting held July 20th, 1928. Brother Whitehead Bay was the secretary. They filed the form 1099 August 1st, 1928 at 2.52 p.m. Section 36 laid out the form of filed documents it is the format of our warrant of authority. That's why I, Noble Drew Ali, solemnly swear, and not we as all, power was vested in the prophet, the meeting held July 20th, 1928, 
was to appoint sheiks, directors, trustees. The word affidavit is used in section of 36 is the one who executes the act affidavit. Now, this is a very important clause in hers reverse, uh, uh, revised statutes. Such congregation, church, or society may change his name or make it make other amendments as to his original affidavit or incorporation by passing a resolution of such amendment in accordance with rules and usages of such congregation, church, or society. And filing affidavit to that effect in the office of the recorder in the county in which such corporation, church society, is located, such affidavit or copy, therefore duly certified by the re uh, recorder, shall be uh, received as evidence of the due incorporation of such church, congregation, church, or society. The resolution must be passed by vote officially called a quorum. The minimum the minimal number of officers and members of committee or organization, usually a majority, must who must be present for a valid transaction, two-thirds of the vote is needed. Thus, the electing such offices as grand advisor, grand sheik, etc., is done by law of the quorum. The quorum convenes and the resolution is passed by more than two-thirds vote of the officers of the MST of A., this will be the grand body according to section 36 of our authority. Such affidavit or copy thereof duly certified by the recorder shall be received as evidence of the due in corporation, church or society recorder, county clerk, Salom Jaskanowski. Now this concludes that part of the demonstration because now because it can go we go we can go on and on. But this is what I'm talking about, the grand body. So the grand body, everybody's saying, oh, I don't like this grand body. I'm going to go over here. Oh, what part of grand body you with? You know, this, so this, this, you know, so th all this is just causing a lot of confusion. Just stay with the grand body you with. Do the work that the prophet set out for us to do. We have much work to, be, or to, to do in this Moorish nation to raise the consciousness of our people to a level to give, you know, so that they can receive this divine salvation and receive this divine creed and their nationality. So we have much work to do, and we can't do it because the Prophet Noble Jali said in his literature that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if we divide it amongst ourselves, then there is no uh, feasible or possible way that we're going to be able to raise up this Moorish nation. So we need to think twice. We need to get back into the teachings of the Holy Prophet Noble Jali, and we need to take heed. Because the prophet said that he could do more for us in the spirit than he can do in the flesh. You know, and it was this appointed time to go. So uh, it was time for the prophet to go. But I have, uh, I got something else that I want to talk about. About co becoming a member of the more Scientific of America. The prophet Noble John Lee said, if you have race, race pride, join the more Scientific of America. Then you have the power to redeem your race because you will know who you are and who your forefathers were. So many who, who wonder... Who do we call Asiatic? For this reason, I will list who our prophet taught us are the Asiatics. Those who, uh, who descent nature started in Asia. The prophet tells us the fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nations of North America need to learn to love instead of hate and to know their higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Holy Quran Mecca for the teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans, etc., the key of civilization, that, as the Prophet Noble Jali said in the literature, that the key of civilization was in the hands of the Asiatic nations. The Moors, who were the ancient Moabites and the founders of the holy city of Mecca. The Egyptians, who were the Hamatites and of direct descendants of Mizram, the Arabians, and the seed of Hagar, Japanese and Chinese. The Hindus of India, the descendants of the ancient Canaanites, Hittites, and Moabites from the land of Canaan. The Asiatic nations and countries in North, South, and Central America, the Moorish Americans and Mexicans in North America, Brazilians, Argentinians, and Chileans in South America, Colombians, Nicaraguans, and the natives of San Salvador in Central America, etc. All of these are Muslim. The Turks, who are the direct descendants of Hagar, who are the chief protectors of the Islamic creed of Mecca, beginning from Muhammad I, the founder of the uniting of Islam by the command of the great universal God, Allah. So this is the divine origin of the Asiatic nations. So 
uh, what I wanted to say is that, you know, I've been uh, had a couple of questions that I was going to uh, uh, ask the sheik, but I want to ask him his feelings. So when he come back on here, I'll be able to ask him the, uh, 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 these questions and, and, and get his uh, get his thought on on, uh, on on my question. But um, I'm, I'm looking at the fact that, uh, you know, there's just so much going on in this more scientific America. And then, and, and then the prophet said, the prophet Noble Jali said in his literature, he said that we need to get right before we are made to do so. You know what I'm saying? So um, Moors need to get right out there. Uh, and, and we need to teach the true teachings of Prophet Noble Jali. Somebody was saying something too, uh, you know, because I keep track of a lot of things that's being posted on Facebook. And, uh, uh, but uh, when I have more time uh, next week, if I'm blessed to be back on the show next week, uh, I can finish out and, and come with another a measure of what I wanted to talk about tonight. But at this present time, I'm going to call the Sheik back onto the show. I uh, uh, praise Allah and uh, uh, give honors to the Prophet Noble Jali, uh, honors to Marcus Garvey, and I uh, thank the Sheik for having me on the show. And I thank you all for paying attention and listening uh, to what we were talking about tonight. May Allah continue to bless you all. Peace. Islam, all. Islam. Praise Allah. Praise Allah, Sheik. I enjoy it. There's always an honor. You know, when uh, I get the opportunity to hear Brother Boston Hill teach this gospel, because uh, the way that he was raised, he has some good understanding. You know, uh, he was talking to uh, some people the other day, and he made some statements. He said, where was Nova Jolie's uh, wife at when she passed form? What grand body was she a part of? He asked about the Cook Bay brothers, because Jolie took his fares off and put on one of them. Mm -hmm. He said, what grand body was they with? you know, when the prophet uh, passed form. So what is taking place is the prophet said that the movement will go so low that you think it vanished from the face of the earth. He said, one day you're going to look up and see nothing but turban and fences. The conventions are over now. They even had a clown convention this year. If you looked at, been looking at the news, they had a clown's convention. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to find out why them Europeans had a clown's convention uh, during the same time that the Moors had that. But you all least said the movement will go so low, you think it's vanished from the face of the earth, and you look up and see nothing but turban and fences. That time is coming and manifest. Mm -hmm. He also said that the third and the fourth generation will see his works. He didn't say that the third and fourth generation going to do his works, but he said the third and fourth generation will see his works. And as me, being one of those that joined the temple around 1972, I've seen a lot of different changes in the Morris Science Temple of America. I see a lot of different things. I see that the grand body that gave everybody a lot of support and a lot of assistance, everybody's running from there and running somewhere else. But as the chairman spoke earlier, on the back of our questionnaire, we have Herb's Law, divided statute. And you know, as long as the law lives, man can't die. So Drew Ali knew that things like Today was transpiring, was going to transpire. That's why he didn't put the movement in one person's hand. But every time I look around the nation, I see a lot of different things, a lot of different people. And the prophet has suffered much and severely in the past through misunderstanding of what the movement was dedicated to. Now, let me reiterate this because it's important that I do. Uh, last week, my brother came on the show and talked real well. He is a member of the uh, Islamic faith. So in the Morris Science Temple, you know, when Noble Drew Ali was on the scene, he said that the Chinese and the Japanese and the Vietnamese was at the door of the temple before everybody else got there, and they was on the front row. <laughs> and you and me, we just come on in later on and take the second and third row. Why? Because they know that he's a lost prophet. They know that it was Noble Jew Ali who told them that they were the seed of Abraham, the seed of Hagar. See, Jew Ali told us that. He showed the Chinese nation, the Japanese nation, the Vietnamese nation, how they could hook themselves back up with the founders of nations coming through Hagar and Abraham. So what we need to understand, that the prophet did say that the move will go so low you think it's vanished from the face of the earth. But who are you? Hmm. If you call yourself Negro, if you call yourself colored, 
If you call yourself black, you have separated yourself from the constitutional foe. We're talking about citizenship. When Noble Drew Ali was on the scene in 1913 at our first convention in 1928, he had senators, he had congressmen, he had aldermans. And at that time, Noble Drew Ali had the Moorish Americans to vote for one of these particular people that was running for office. Now, I know everybody coming around now. Everybody don't want to be a part of the government. You don't like the government. The government is doing that. You all, he told us from day one, we have to honor this flag. Now, the United States is known as the Great Melting Pot. And this Great Melting Pot deals with many different nationalities. And we're talking about the free spirit. We're talking about a free spirit to be able to exercise your own senses. That's what we mean by the spirit, because Drew Ali say, let every member exercise his five senses who is able to do so. Some people not even able to exercise, they five. So ain't no need of me telling you about the seven senses right now, because the five senses are physical. But we know what Drew Ali told us that, see, you have a Chinese New Year. Every nationality have their own holidays. But you and I, we don't have holidays of our own. We take on the holidays of the European. Now, if I tell you that I don't honor Christmas, if I tell you that I don't honor Thanksgiving, don't look at me negative because I have our own nationality. We have our own holidays. Our holidays just ain't in accord with those of other nationalities. Every different nationality have their own holidays except you and me. Why? Because we don't know who we are, and we don't know who our forefathers were. So, Noble Drew Ali, the first one come. There was a lot of people here that taught Islam. We were talking about that earlier before the show. But it was Noble Drew Ali who got it legally established in this government. Right. Before Noble Drew Ali, you couldn't read the Holy Quran of Mecca. If you do that, it hits you in your head. But he came and got it legally established, and with that, when he got it legally established, what else did he do? He bought us a flag. He bought us a flag that that is this uh, uh, flag in the United Nations. But when Drew Ali was there, there was no United Nations. Mm. Now we're talking about the flag. When I was in the military, they told me that there was no flag right of the American flag. When you go down, down in this government, you look up, all you see is the American flag. So if I go to China, if I go to Germany, if I give up this uh, uh, membership of this uh, citizenship here, then I go wherever I go. I'd be a Moorish Chinese, a Moorish German, mm -hmm. because I'm Moorish first. Because man today is what his forefathers were yesterday. Yeah. And there's no one who is able to change man from the decent nature of his mother and father, unless his power extend beyond the great universal creator, Allah himself. Some old brothers that used to be in an organization that taught uh, Islam said, man, we come up, they ain't never tell us about Noble Drew Ali. That don't make sense. Why was somebody that teaching you Islam about yourself, but back in the day they didn't tell you nothing about Noble Drew Ali when that foundation was uh, found it through Drew Ali. So you got to ask yourself that. Why didn't we hear anything about nationality? You know, why didn't we hear anything about divine creed by the way Drew Ali taught it? Because Drew Ali said, what is our religion? He said, our religion is Islamism. Mm. See, we're talking about the doctrine. We're talking about the practice and we're talking about the study. We're talking about that of our forefathers. See, because right now, you have brothers that look just like me. And they're going to tell me that Muhammad is the last and the seal of the prophets, and after him, there's no more coming. That's ludicrous. It don't make sense because I know that there's a God, and I know he sits high and he sits low, looks low. And if we lost the nationality and the divine creed, Allah going to send us somebody to redeem us from that which was lost. Allah going to send us somebody to hook us back up with the family of nations. And in order to be a citizen of this government, you must proclaim your nationality. In order to sit down and talk to these Europeans about anything, you have to proclaim your nationality. Everybody have a nationality except you and me. And we have brothers. And we have sisters. That's my age, over 65. And you accepting the term black now. But when you grew up, you wouldn't accept the term black. 
Because if somebody call you black, they better know how to fight. But you accept the term black now. And black, according to science, means death. When you call yourself black, you call yourself something dead. You even have brothers and sisters in Africa today from Ghana, Nigeria, Sierra Leone. They call themselves black. That's why Drew Ali said we got to take these teachings and take these teachings back over in the east and wake up our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. We got to take this Moorish Quran. Mm -hmm. Back, I remember Brother Al Lovio. He was over in the east one time, and some disturbance took place over there. And they held everybody up and wouldn't let nobody through. Lovio showed this Moorish Quran. See, we don't know. We're talking about signs and symbols. We don't even know what we have right here. <laughs> Drew Ali gave us something right here that was redeem us from that which was lost. Noble Drew Ali gave us these tools to help us build the temple of perfected man, a temple that should never be destroyed. Man is a spirit and a part of a law. It's not in flesh to think, and it's not in bones to reason. So we want to thank a lot for sending us Prophet Noble Drew Ali, because before Noble Drew Ali came, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were talking about interpretation when we talking about three-fifths of a man. Mm. And when they were talking about three-fifths of a man, they said two more Europeans than Asiatic to make you thus. However, Drew Ali told us that we needed two-fifths because we was three-fifths of a man. And it was two-fifths that was missing. And the two-fifths that was missing was our nationality and our divine creed. Yes, you can add two more Europeans to it, but there's no greater than you and me. That's just something that man done. We're talking about what Allah done now. Mm. Because Allah is the father of the universe. The father of love, truth, peace, freedom. Now, you say you submit your will to Allah. How do you submit your will to Allah? By living according to the Kalima Shahada. Living according to to the fruits of the spirit, living according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. When we begin to talk about Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and the beast, when you talk about them and look those words up, you see a different attribute. Mm. And the attribute of Lucifer, Satan, devil, dragon, and beast is hatred, slander, lewdness, murder, Theft and everything that harms. So I heard the chairman saying. So everybody want to know what grand body you with. The grand body we here, Paul, we're trying to make this body grand. This is the grand body we're working on now. We know we got to hook up. But right now we're trying to get ready for that. We're trying to get ready to be part, become a part of another grand body. You know, because all of our bodies have to become grand. And how do you do that? Living according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. This is what makes you a Muslim. Not how many times you bump your head on some ground. Not how many times you let everybody hear you pray. You know, those that say that they pray, you pray in silent meditation. It says in silent meditation, Jesus sat beside a floor and spring. And it was a holy day. So every day is a holy day for a holy man. I hear people every Friday, hope you're holy day, Mo. Man, every day is a holy day. Every day we're supposed to do holy things. And how do you do holy things? What is holy to you? Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Those are the highest principles that's known to man. You love your brothers and sisters, that they live in peace. Have freedom, and justice will come to us all. This is what Noble Drew Ali gave us. And this is why I honor Noble Drew Ali so much, because if it wasn't for prophet Noble Drew Ali, we wouldn't even be on earth now. Hmm. See, because when the books say, on that father and that mother, that that days may be long upon the earth land which the Lord thy God Allah has given thee. Your father is the great God Allah. Your mother is mother earth because man derives his name from the earth land, just like Jesus. When they had Jesus on the cross, he was talking to the Lord. He said, Lord, oh Lord, why have thou forsaken me? So this is who Jesus was talking to. Jesus was talking to God when you say, oh, Lord. But every time brothers and sisters of the day talk about the Lord, they're thinking about Jesus. When, when Solomon and David wrote the psalm, Jesus wasn't even born yet. Hmm. So there's a lot of things that's here in the Moorish Science Temple of America that Drew Ali gave us. So I'm always honored to be able to come before our Portland listening audience. I'm honored to have the chairman back here today. Praise a lot. Uh, so in conclusion... I would like to quote something that comes from the prophet, Nova Drew Ali. Prophet warns all Muslim governors all to read proclamation at each meeting. I hereby inform all members that they must end all radical agitating speeches while they work in their homes or on the street. 
We are for peace and not destruction. Stop flashing your cause that you will please the cause of confusion. Remember your cause is for your salvation. Faith you obey these orders will be of severe consequence. We are for love, truth, peace, and freedom. And when these principles are violated, justice then must take its course. Any member or group of members of the whole militia filled the walls of the temple or the prophet or violate the divine covenant of the Moorish movement will receive their reward for law for unjust deeds. All true Moors will and must obey the laws laid down to them by their prophet. If they lose confidence in the prophet, they should turn their card button, cease wearing their turban affairs, and return to the state where the prophet found you. These are trying out, dear Moors, and every evil spirit is moving now. They are trying every weak mind to tear down and drag out the true foundation which has been laid by me, the prophet. But if you have the love of Allah in your heart and the spirit of your forefathers, you fear not nothing you will see, but will sacrifice to the utmost of your very life to protect your prophet and the temple. This is the everlasting movement founded by the prophet through the will of Allah to redeem his people from their sins. At this time, I recite the Moorish and Barakam prayer. Allah, the father of the universe, the father of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, and my salvation. By night and by day, through his holy prophet, Drew Ali. Amen. Drew Ali came for me mm -hmm. He had me on his mind And I'm so glad he came for me 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 Praise Allah. Allah, Mark.